Okay, so to begin manipulating the data, uh, we'll go down to this bottom bar here. This is the filters bar. Um, there are three different types of filters that we can use in Palladio to isolate or manipulate the data, facets, timelines, and time spans. Um, we're going to start with the time span mostly because um, it's not as particularly relevant for the type of project that I'm doing. It just helps you isolate and look at the data in a different way. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of give you an example here. We'll go to grouped bars for this. And rather than doing uh, birth year and death year of the people involved, we could do that and kind of just show a list of you know what these people's lifespans look like. We'll just do the letter dates um, for both the start date and the death date. What this will do is it'll just give us a scatter plot of uh, the different letters and we'll label them by recipients. Label them by recipients and um, we'll group them by the author. So what this means is we can look at this scatter plot line and then when we highlight one of the dots, this is one letter. The letter is to Holdrick Zwingli from Heinrich Glarian and um, that gives us the date as well, 1521, um, July 4th, 1521. Same thing we go here. So this is just a different way to look at uh, you know, the data. This is a letter written to George Balladin from Martin Luther, 1521, uh, June 10th, 1521. Another way that we could maybe use uh, this feature, this time span feature, is we'll go to just do this as a bar graph, and we'll do birth and death years for the start and end dates. And this will be, again, just we'll do for the label recipients and the author. What this allows us to do then is everybody who's involved in the correspondence, either writing letters to Martin Luther or writing letters about Martin Luther, we can then highlight and we can say, okay, Frederick the, the Third received a letter from Martin Luther and this was his time span, right? Lived from uh, October 10th, 1483 to December, or sorry, February 18th, 1546. So again, it gives us kind of a new way to look at information relevant to um, what we're seeing um, in the information being projected, either in the map, map graph or, or table above. Okay, but we're not going to worry too much about time span. What's really neat about Palladio is the timeline and facet features. Um, so facets allow us to manipulate different types of data in a number of different ways. So we're going to, for description, let's do um, the subjects, right? So if we want to figure out, okay, what is Luther talking about and when? We can go to dimensions, we'll go to subjects. And what this will do is it'll bring up a drop list. Uh, the count is by number of letters um, 17 times. And there are 17 different letter, letters where he brings up public, publishing concerns, clerical celibacy, the Hall and Duchess, all of these different, these different subjects. What we can then do is we can add a timeline. Add a timeline feature. You know, we don't want to go by birth year, we want to go by letter date. We can uh, do the height by number of letters, and then we'll group by the author. Okay, and what this can do is if we drag a span of time over this uh, to, uh, this timeline, let's say the first three months of Luther writing letters. So this is the first three months of him in exile. You can see it comes up here that this is now effective not just for the uh, facets, the subjects that we have down here, right? So during this time span, six out of the 17 total times he talks about publishing concerns, he's talking about it during these three months, okay? And we can actually reformat so we can see the most popular ones. So um, one thing that's kind of famous for Luther during this time period is he got very, very sick while he was in exile. And a lot of his letters deal with um, him kind of talking about this sickness, this constipation that he's feeling, asking for medicine and different things. So especially in the first three months, this is one of the big things that's on Luther's mind is his health. Um, and one thing that's unique with this, if we want to uh, uh, put this facet on, right? So let's say that uh, we only want to take a look at the letters that talk about Luther's health, okay? Um, what we can do then is we can go back to the map. We can just down these here. These are still in effect down here. You can see so the timeline's in effect only from this date to this date and then this facet filter is now in effect. So we're only dealing with letters that deal with constipation. Um, if we go over to the graph we can see that Luther is only talking about this subject with three people. Right? This is a very intimate subject. It's very difficult for him. And so of all the letters that he's writing on this subject alone, at least in the first three months, he's only speaking and writing about it to George Spallatin. Philip Melanchthon and Nicholas von Amsdorf. All of them are in the same area, they're close friends, and you can see also 
uh, the line from the Long Thunder Spalatin that they're discussing Luther's health issues as well, right? Now, if we want to, um, uh, you know, choose a different subject, we can just X out here. Um, so this is back to just the number of letters that are being written from this time period. This is still um, still in effect, that timeline facet there. What we can do now, rather than maybe do constipation, maybe let's do um, let's do another facet and let's do uh, mentions. So we'll take a look at who Luther is bringing up. Who is he talking about in these letters? And again, we'll do count by the number of letters. So during this time, he's mentioning himself nine out of 30 times. Nine out of 30 total times out of the uh, correspondence uh, is being brought up during this time period. Other significant figures, Karlstadt, Melanchthon, George of Saxony, these are all uh, either leaders in his area of Germany, people that he's concerned with. Okay. Now let's take a look maybe if we're going to... Um, Let's do a different timeline span here. So we'll get rid of this, we'll minimize this. And rather than doing uh, the early first three months, let's do kind of the middle three months. So let's go from October to maybe December, early part of the year, okay? Um, and we wanna figure out, okay, what, is, what are Luther's concerns? Who is he talking about during this time, okay? So we'll go back to the mentions facet here, and we'll see that during this time, again, Luther's name is being brought up a lot, okay? But more significantly, we have, during this time, Albrecht von Mainz being mentioned 14 times, being, for, being mentioned 14 different times. So let's click on his name and that'll uh, add another facet, okay? We minimize these, we can see that the people talking about this particular person during this time, Luther, he's writing to the Augustinians, um, to a gentleman in Switzerland, or in uh, Strasbourg named Goebel. Um, we find out, uh, if you do some digging, uh, Capito is actually the secretary to this gentleman, Albrecht von Mainz, that we're discussing here. So Luther's going to be writing a lot of letters back and forth to him. Um, and if we add on, maybe adding and, and taking a look, okay, if we know that Mainz, Albrecht von Mainz is being mentioned a lot, we can um, add another facet going back to subjects. And we can see, okay, is there a particular subject that Luther is also talking about during this time? And it turns out there is, right? Catholic corruption and the Halle indulgence. Um, Albrecht von Mainz was an archbishop who was uh, actually responsible for the indulgence con controversy, um, right? The idea that you could pay a certain amount of money to get your relatives a certain number of years off during purgatory as long as you pay the church this thing. Um, he was one of Luther's first big enemies in 1517 and 1518 when Luther got going. And during this time while Luther is in exile, these three months, uh, Albrecht von Mainz is once again um, offering these indulgences, this time in the nearby city of Halle. So by looking at the letters that include both the Halle indulgence and mentions of Albrecht von Mainz, we can take a look and see again who he's talking to. It's these same figures. We can go to the map and see where he's writing this issue. Um, Halle is very close to Wittenberg, so it makes sense that you know he's writing to people who are in this area as well. Um, and uh, so again, this, this, these, these facets, these timelines allow us to kind of manipulate and pour into the data to kind of bring some of these, these subjects out. Um, and it's one of the, the cool features of Palladio that you get to manipulate data in that way. Um, and every facet, um, every filter that you put on, um, whether it's a facet, a timeline, or a time span, um, are controlled uh, down here at the, at the filters bar and uh, they are maintained whether you switch back from map to graph to the table, right? So these are all the letters. If you wanted to see all the letters that talk about Albrecht von Mainz that bring up this issue of the Halle indulg the indulgence in the city of Halle, this gives you all the information, right? The table that we set up as far as the information on the letters, you can go and say, okay, these are the specific letters. Here's where I would find them if I wanted to look up the text. Here's when they were written. Um, and so forth. So again, this is kind of a really neat feature in Palladio that allows you to pour through the data and allows others who come to your projects to manipulate them in different ways, ways that maybe you didn't think of or aren't necessarily concerned with. This becomes a resource for others who are asking you know, different kinds of questions.